many more old gems y'all stumble across? I don't stumble across none of them. I'm telling you, like, I don't have none of my old shit. Well, that's all. you. You do. You actually make an effort to like get rid of all your past. Oh yeah. Shit. Nah. I think when like t Nick oh. doesn't delete any. Oh no. Hold on. Don't say nothing yet. Still has less than 300 views. That's fine. You don't I make deserve numbers, more. motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. My <laughs> Promotion. This is a tough talk theme song. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> bro, that intro long is fuck, bro. Ew. Oh, I did the ew. I did a hook. Oh. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I sound young. <laughs> Yeah, nigga was like 15. Oh, or no, not 15. He was like 16. Nah, nah, maybe it's 15. Your voice hadn't even dropped yet. Ew. <laughs> he already had not hit, Nick. Hold on, let him cook. Alright, time to stop messing around. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, nigga. You don't know that. <laughs> Yo. Fuck oh, out of here. fuck. March 12th, 2010. Relax. Oh my god. That was god. the upload date. Nine oh years ago. Oh my god. Man, reintroduce this, man. Alright, alright, alright. We're back. <laughs> we are back. Um, if y'all were with us on the last show, you know what we were playing. Oh my god. And, um. What is this? Tell them what it is. This is Tough Talk. There you That's go. right. Damn. I'm so sorry. We're Damn. just We're just so into it. I forgot to introduce the show. Welcome back to Tough Talk. Uh, another wonderful show by Lovelace. I'm here with Nick. Hi, yo. My um, very annoying, very obnoxious host. Yeah. And of that course. That joke doesn't get old. <sighs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, the love of my life, Connor from the 703. Yeah. And we're here to learn a little bit more about you. What? What would you like to know? Um, well, <laughs> okay, I want to fuck you up. Okay. I want to bring up a name. Uh. And oh, you I'm have here to, for this. You have to mm. you have just give you a general mm. reaction. Let me right? get my tea. Uh, Master Nate. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good old Nate, bro. Yo. Yo, well, it's funny. It's like, we remember we saw, uh, well, yeah, remember we saw him, um, not this past Christmas, but the one before that. I see him at all random times. Yo, he just be popping up. I literally went to. You know, you know, Governor Allen. Mm -hmm. I, oh, I went that some time to some random girl, mm -hmm. and he was just on top of this like mountain type thing, Excuse reading me. a book. Just, just, just like, <laughs> yeah. This is that type of person he is. It just mm -hmm. it was like I was like, Nate, what's up, man? <laughs> yeah, bro. Like he like if you go to Stafford, he's all over the place. So who is he? And uh, who is he to you? Nate. Uh, he's um. Damn, I don't describe Nate. He's just a really good dude. Mm -hmm. Like, he like he let me use his crib to record like my my mixtape, mm -hmm. which is really nice of him. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he introduced me to uh, IQ and Leon from mm -hmm. Five Senses. He, he introduced me to them. He introduced me to Zane. You know, Zane like that's my best friend. Mm -hmm. Like he introduced us, mm -hmm. and uh, he's just a, he's just a really good guy. How'd you meet me? I, I, fam, I don't fucking remember. I swear to God, I don't. I I remember like. I, rem I think I remember the first time I went to his crib, but mm -hmm. I don't remember how we met. Mm -hmm. But what was it like the first time you went to his crib? And what was it for? Um, I don't remember if I recorded that day or not. Mm -hmm. But I went to his crib because, like, he lived. We lived in the same neighborhood. I didn't know that. Um, I'm to you know what? Because I think I'm starting to remember how I met him. All right, all right. I remember. I remember. All right. Mm -hmm. So. I was I was walking the dog, and he was just like he'd just be walking around the neighborhood. Like you'll just see he's he's this tall, lanky white dude mm -hmm. with like long hair and uh like a huge fucking beard. Yeah, he'll shave it off sometimes, but the shit will be back in like a month. Right, a crazy beard. And I think like I think like I was walking the dog, and like I bumped into him. Like I was just, just walked past him, and he like I think he knew who I was, mm -hmm. and he was just like, "Hey, what's up? I'm Nate." You know. Um, he was like, he told me that he knew who I was, and he was like, you know, yeah, like, I like your shit, um, I just live, like, on this side of the neighborhood, come over anytime you want, and, like, I think we exchanged numbers, mm -hmm. and then the first time I went to his crib, I don't remember if you were with me or not, 
I went a bunch of times. I don't remember if it was the first time or not. Well, the first time I went to his crib, I don't remember if I recorded or not, but I do remember that, like, he showed me, like, his whole, like, little studio mm -hmm. setup. And for maybe for a couple of months, maybe like a month or two, I just, like, I was just over there just recording shit at his house. And, um, yeah, and we did, like, a music video together, too. Mm -hmm. That was my first music video. The, really? Yeah, Stella, Stella Party. Stella Party. Yeah, with, with Nate. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, he just, like, a lot of really, really, like, a lot of seeds were planted when I met Nate. Mm -hmm. And um, I ran into him, because I hadn't seen him in years. And I ran into him, like, no, not even not run into him, but, like, he hit me up on Facebook, because he definitely mm -hmm. don't be using Twitter like that. So he hit me on Facebook. And he said that he was back in Virginia because I know he was living in like Oregon for a while mm -hmm. or some shit. And he was like, yeah, I'm back in Virginia. And um, it was around Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And my family, at the time I was living with my parents and my family was out of town. Mm -hmm. So I, and I, I had to work so I couldn't go. But uh, Zane was coming back in town. So it was like Nate was back and Zane was back. And I think the first night that Zane came back, we went to Nick's house and Nate showed up. And like we we took a photo because like you know Zane was just like damn mate you were the one that actually introduced us and shit mm -hmm. like that so we took like this nice little photo in Nick's basement mm -hmm. of uh, like all three of us it was just nice but he's he's a real good dude. That's nice. And you had Nate, which introduced you to Five Senses. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I want to know about Five Senses. Who well, are they? And how did you meet them? Five Senses is a collective of uh, like some fire ass artists, mm -hmm. like just artists I've never heard from before. And it's 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 me, it's me, IQ, mm -hmm. who like we know what he's doing. Um, way of IQ if you don't Way of IQ. Uh, he's done shit with like Jaden Smith, Gold Link, mm -hmm. Pee Wee Longway. I he just, he actually just got on some show. Mm -hmm. uh, some. TBS George. I think he's going on tour with Machine Gun Kelly soon. Uh, he's in there. He was, matter of fact, he was kind of, in a way, I guess, like the leader. I always thought he was a leader. So it was him, uh, his brother, his little brother, Leon Knight. Yep. Uh, Tony Hundreds. Yep. Producer. Producer. Sometimes rapper. Sometimes. Uh, Noose. Dope producer. Shibuzi. Dope artist in general. It was Shibuzi. He was, he's, dope he, he's in there. Mm -hmm. uh, Vest is in there. Mm -hmm. uh, Smoke with Hutch mm -hmm. and Loner Ab, they were in there at yeah. some point. J.O., Baby J, J he's in there. Uh, May 6 was in there for a while. Mm -hmm. like, we've had a lot of people in there. Isn't Zane part of Five Senses? Zane was part of Five Senses. How I forget fucking Zane. <laughs> it's so fucking many, like, it's hard to remember. You're the best puppy yeah. there. <laughs> but yeah, like, that was, that's all who was, like, in, yeah, in, in Five. They're all kind of scattered right now, mm -hmm. but we still keep in touch. Yeah, a lot of us are in L.A. Mm -hmm. um, I think, no, Hutch and Loner are still here. Hutch and, but, and uh, Tony. Tony's here, too. Oh, Tony's here? He's still here. So tell me more about your time with Five Senses, because it seems like that kind of helped develop the foundation of mm. your direction right now in music. So. so Nate introduced me to Q and Leon. They were supposed to come to my first video shoot, mm -hmm. but they they, up, they couldn't make it. They were like... 16 at the I time, I was like 19. Yeah. So like, I Nate got me hip to, to Q's music and I was just blown the fuck away because right. he was like, he's 16. I'm like, there's no way that a kid this young is making like music like this. Mm -hmm. And I, I really wanted to work with him, but I was like, yeah, ain't no way he'd fuck with me. Yeah, we're like 19, 20 at this time. Yeah, and like, he, he reached out to me and he hit me up and he was like, or no, he at first he tweeted on Twitter that he wanted to work with me and, mm -hmm. and that, that was like, holy shit. So then he hits me up. And he was like, we, we scheduled a date to like, you know, meet up and, and, and like talk and shit. But then like a really bad storm hit. So mm -hmm. that kind of postponed everything. Right. And then he like, we ended up meeting, like me, I, I brought Nick with me. Mm -hmm. And like, we went to his crib and when we walked in, <laughs> so like we show up, right? And I meet him and we walk inside and fucking the first thing we see is Leon, Leon Knight. He's on the computer, but he's wearing like a, a big ass red daishiki. <laughs> and like yeah. and joggers with no <laughs> socks. Excuse me. <laughs> and bro, like I'm just this is after uh, Leon too. Like we, oh we yeah, already Banana Man. Him, we already know a little about him because of, he was this local thing called Banana Man, yeah. right? Where he like literally just threw in a banana suit and ran across a football game during halftime. There's like this yeah. meme that always pops up where it's yeah. like like this dude dressed up as a grape, right? And like he's 
the banana. Yeah, because they're interviewed by the news. Like in interviews, yeah. so the guy dressed up like a great. Yes, yeah. but like so he was there. Yeah, he was there. Loner Ab was there. Hutch was there. Baby J, Tony. Uh, nah, Noose wasn't there. Mm. I met Noose later. But yeah, they were all there and like, you know, I rapped for him. And then when I left, they were like, yeah, we want you to be part of it. And I was like fucking excited. Basically before we left the driveway. Before before we left the driveway, they texted us and said like, yeah, we want you in five. And I was mm. like, fuck yeah. So like, it was just for like, for years, it was just like us going to their crib. Yeah. Like no matter how far or how close they were, mm. we were always at their crib, like making music. And Q was like, he was a really good coach. Um, all of them were, but Q like worked with me real, real close. Like. Yeah. He would just like coach me a lot and i remember i get so fucking annoyed with him we used to argue a lot and just so fucking much because like we're both like really really i'm not gonna say like we just we were both like really 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 vocal like oh, really okay. really vocal you know what i mean like we both have to get our point across right yeah. so we would butt heads a lot but then like he would just like you know we would record and i just remember like anytime i record like before i can get two words out he just stopped me mm. and be like do it over no do it over no do it over i'm like what the mm, fuck i'm sure that was frustrating but he would just like he'd tell me he's like dude like when you when you record you gotta like m mean every fucking thing you're saying mm -hmm. like if you're if this is what you're saying you gotta feel the way you feel when you wrote it right so like he taught me how to put emotion into my raps and shit mm -hmm. and you know when i was like i think when i was working on my like my, my first project the one that like got my name really out there mm -hmm. he was like he, he had moved to florida by then mm -hmm. but he was still like coaching me and shit like that just still fucking coaching the shit mm -hmm. out of me and like just like kind of pushing me right you know what i mean and leon was just like he was just always just down to make music and because me and nick were always there like and he's just goofy as shit too mm -hmm. and because we always just like indulged him in that like me and him all made like a lot of fire ass shit mm -hmm. me and news got like me and news got close just off the strength of like we like we kind of grew up the same way but noose was like the thing i fucked with about noose was like he never lied to me right. he would never tell me what i wanted to hear zane was the same way too right and then like we you know we met boozy and i don't know why boozy just really always like fucked with me for mm -hmm. some reason like some it's, it's wild like sometimes i go on my soundcloud and i see that he listened to my shit mm -hmm. like it's crazy and i talked and i, I you know you were there when i fucking talked to him on the phone yeah like a couple weeks ago yeah but like yeah they were just like they were all like just talented as shit but just so fucking young you remember mm -hmm. you were there yeah definitely and like that i, I it, it's like the the shit that they taught me just always stuck with me mm -hmm. and i don't think they know that they taught me i think they were just like you know just just yeah. engaging just engaging yeah. just engaging but like i i made so much fire shit with him and mm -hmm. like i know i can i know i can do it again when i see him mm -hmm. but like it's just it they 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 really influenced me a lot when i was like still just like figuring everything out and trying to find my sound and shit mm -hmm. so back on the whole influences thing they're an outside influence i mean in music they're a big one they're mm -hmm. a big influence yeah. not just celebrity wise but like mm -hmm. they actually had a really big sway in what you uh, yeah, like, because, like, people don't really, people don't really know that, like, I know how to produce, like, I know right. how to make beats, mm -hmm. I just don't do it because I don't got the fucking patience for it, yeah. but, like, Q, Q and, and Tony Hundreds, like, they taught me how to make beats, mm -hmm. like, they sat me down and they, you know, part of it was just, like, I'd ask them, like, show me how to make beats, and they say, nigga, you just fucking YouTube, and I'm not about right. to sit down, but then, like, on the side, Q would be like, alright, look, you want to know how to make beats, because, mm -hmm. like, we were always at their fucking crib, like, yeah. I swear to God, we show up at the crib, sh I shit you not, like, 7 in the morning, mm -hmm. like, while they're still asleep, and, like, not leave till 4 a.m. the right. next day. They wow. never had furniture, so we spend the night sleeping on the floor. Sleep on the floor, like, we'd sleep on the floor, <laughs> like, wear, like, dead ass, like, wear yeah. each other's clothes, like, wow. just throw them shits on the floor, and then one of us would pick it up and put, like, the t-shirt on or the jacket and shit, like, so many fucking times we spent, like, times we slept in, like, studios together and shit like Crazy. that. And then, like, when I flew out to L.A. to go see him and shit, mm -hmm. like, it just just a long-ass history with him. That's well, awesome. I got I got stories with all of them. That's amazing. With all of them. That's history right there. Mm -hmm. All right. So, real quick, we're going to take another break. Just kind of, you know, take a second, smoke a little bit more, and uh, we'll be back.